Hello, my name is Christina Ivaz with Placer County Public Health. The pandemic turned our world upside down, and now is a great time for a post-pandemic reset to bring back balance into our lives, which will actually improve both our physical and mental health. No shame, no blame. Each of us had our own personal struggles, and as life continues to happen, the framework in this short presentation and poster available later, will offer a path forward so we can bring our best selves to any situation and to periodically assess where we may need to tweak things a little for better outcomes. We can't control what goes on in the world, but we can arm ourselves to be more resistant to any potentially negative impacts from environmental events, pressures, and the stressors of daily life. The following presentation will outline some key and very accessible practices each of us can do to improve our mental health and wellness, no matter what's happening around us. These four areas we know are critical to maintain physical health. As science is advanced, we now know they are also critical to maintain our mental health. They may seem too simple to make a difference, but it's when we don't have balance in these foundational physical lifestyle pillars, there is an increased risk for both physical and mental health challenges, including substance use or misuse. One thing to keep in mind is as society is advanced, our bodies are still very primitive. Meeting these basic needs will also improve sleep hygiene. Insufficient, undisrupted sleep is the one of the most significant risk factors for youth mental health challenges today and can even be a risk factor for substance use. Plenty of undisrupted sleep may not be familiar to our teens and young adults, our digital natives. So, unlike us older adults, they may not see the connection between sleep deprivation and mental health impacts, but they are there nevertheless. Let's start with our gut. Too much of anything can throw off the delicate balance in our digestive tracts. The science of our gut is clearly linked to our emotions, along with physical health. Too much stress, sugar, refined carbohydrates, or fried foods creates an environment where disease can flourish in addition to changing hormonal responses in the brain connected to our memory, sleep, and emotional responses like depression. A soda and french fries once a week may not have a negative impact on emotions, but having foods like this every day may. The power of the sun and being in nature is not to be underestimated. Natural light, even without sunshine, triggers chemicals in the brain that increase positive emotions and sleep regulation. Sunlight also provides necessary vitamin D for a strong immune system and strong bones. Of course, too much sun should be avoided for obvious reasons, but it's important to remember sunlight is essential for our wellness every day. People who live in far northern climates are very aware of how natural light or lack of it impacts emotions. Hence, the mental health imbalance of seasonal affective disorder or SAD which happens during the winter months when the days are much shorter and higher depression rates are common. Exercise and breathing. Aerobic exercise releases toxic stress from our bodies, balances our hormones, and increases oxygen to every cell. For these reasons, exercise increases both positive emotions and physical health. Our bodies are built for movement, no matter how sedentary our society or lifestyles may be. When we don't get enough movement during the day, behavior, even aggression and insomnia, can be signs that we're not getting enough exercise. Furthermore, one of the most accessible tools we each have is the power to produce a calming response from our body and mind through focused breathing. 
even just two or three slow, deep breaths can produce a beneficial relaxation response to help us think more clearly and get back on track. Practicing regular mindful breathing can prevent the buildup of stressful thoughts and worries, which can lead to anxiety and interfere with a healthy sleep routine. Finally, scientific research has been able to show that not only are plenty of daily fresh fruits and vegetables good for your physical health, but mental health as well, lowering the risk for depression. Much of what makes up food in its natural form has yet to be determined regarding the benefits. So as they say, eating a variety of whole fresh foods is the key to good health and keeps the digestive tract flowing as it should too. What's more, in recent decades, there's been a growing trend, especially among teens and young adults, to drink heavily sugar-laden coffee drinks or energy drinks high in both sugar and caffeine. Not only are these drinks concerning for how they interfere with the delicate balance in our gut, impacting our emotions, but they may also be replacing nutritious meals, another concern. When teens consume drinks high in caffeine, especially in the evening when studying, healthy sleep is impacted. In fact, an, interesting, an interest in caffeine by children and teens can be an early sign they may not be getting enough sleep. And too much caffeine in the evening can be a risk for teens to self-medicate to counter the effects so they can sleep, further adding to the mix. Yes, it is true, both insufficient sleep and caffeine can be a risk factor for substance use. Final thoughts. One of the most important factors impacting youth mental health and even risk for substance use today is insufficient sleep. Adolescents aged 13 to 18 need 8 to 10 hours of uninterrupted sleep most every night. Balance in each area covered will improve healthier sleep experiences. And also periodically assess each category and make small adjustments when needed, but avoid too many changes at once to prevent family rebellion, of course. Other important lifestyle factors like social supports and safety are critical to wellness for everyone. This presentation is focused on physical aspects of wellness that impact mental health, but in no way minimize the importance of personal safety and healthy adult and peer social connections. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. For copies of this poster, in English or Spanish, you can email at the address below or go to raisingplacer.org for this poster and more materials and resources in both Spanish and English. This poster, once it's printed out, can be 11 by 17 or 2 by 3 feet, which are both much easier to read than on this presentation. Thank you.